All right, so now we want to talk about uh, the different types of mud that we're going to use for painting. Um, we're gonna, either going to use what's called Durabond or Quickset mud, which is a powder form, or we're going to be using drywall spackle or joint compound. So these two are pretty much the same thing, just uh, in different sizes. So with the Durabond or the Quickset mud, it comes in powder form. Uh, you need to mix it up. The advantages to using something that's like a Durabond is it dries from within. It doesn't necessarily rely on air in order for it to dry down. Uh, the air does help it, but if you have uh, a patch in a room that you need to get done barely, pretty quickly, you're going to want to use something like the 20 or 45 minute mud um, versus something like the joint compound that's going to rely on air. Uh, it's going to take probably overnight for it to realistically dry before you can coat it again. And with a lot of the um, repairs that we have to do, we have to do multiple coats in order to achieve a, a good finish. So um, for mixing the mud on every project, you're going to have to bring uh, a pan with you, a mixer. You're also going to bring this two bucket system. So one bucket is just going to be an empty bucket with a scoop in here. These buckets are going to stay here. These 20, 45, and 90 minute compounds are going to stay inside the shop. And you're just going to take what you need and put it into the bucket here. And then you're going to have a second bucket that's got a sponge in the bottom that you're going to use to clean out your tools and also add water to your quick set mud to get it mixed. Um, when you're using joint compound, Typically, the joint compound that comes uh, in the box isn't quite ready to use. It's still too thick. So you're going to also have to put that into your pan, add a little bit of water, and get that mixed up as well before you're going to use it. Um, for 95% of the projects that we do, all you're going to use is these two bucket systems and this pan. That's going to take care of minor drywall dings, um, and stuff like that. If you have to do any kind of like major repairs, let's say you have to do like a California patch, which I'm going to show you in a little bit, or you have to tear out a tape joint, then you're going to want to use um, the drywall repair kit, which is the kit up above, and then there's two buckets below, one for water, and then one for mixing mud if you have to, if you're going to end up mixing a lot. Um, and then we also have just a drywall spackle that we're going to use for, for minor dings. So if we look at this board right here, I just put a sample board up to show you kind of uh, an example of what you might encounter on a, on a project. Um, you're going to see dings here and there. These are pretty minor. These could probably just be patched with um, just a lightweight spackle. If you see a joint that's bad, maybe it's included in the work order where we have to replace, we're going to tear out a joint. You're going to want to cut it on each side with your uh, utility knife, tear out that bad tape, and then replace it. And in that case, you're going to be using something more like your Durabond because it's going to dry faster. You can get multiple coats on. You can probably get that patch done in one day or maybe two days versus if you're using joint compound, that's going to be more of a two-day, three-day thing because you're going to have to wait for dry time. If you're repairing a large hole, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this out here and we're going to do a California patch. And in that case, we're going to also use Durabond uh, for two coats. And then we could either do our final coat with Durabond or we do um, our final coat with joint compound. So the advantages to the joint compound is it's easier to work with. And sometimes if you're working in, let's say we're painting an entire house, joint compound may be a good material to use because we, the dry time is less of a factor. If we have a project where we only have like a bedroom or two to do, we're not gonna use joint compound, we're gonna use something like the, the Durabond or the quick set mud. Um, the other advantage to the joint compound is it's a lot easier to sand. So whenever we're using the 20 or 45 minute mud, we're typically gonna be sanding with the Festool uh, vacuum with a surf prep uh, five inch sander attached to it and sanding it with 150 grit. Uh, it's gonna create a little bit more dust because we're usually leaving the surface a little bit more proud, meaning there's gonna be more mud on the, on the surface that we have to sand down before we can paint. Um, so, but with the, with the lightweight spackle and the joint compound, 
we're going to be pinning coats tight usually if we're doing minor drywall repairs with two coats of mud. Pin tight means it's scraped all the way out, uh, flush to the drywall surface. And then, um, and then that's pretty much all you have to do. You have to do some light sanding with a sponge, like a fine uh, sanding sponge. You can go around and do that. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to hit it with the vacuum and the Festool. When, when, whenever we're doing any kind of big patches or big repairs, you know, we tape this joint, we do this uh, repair. Let's say we have a bunch of nail pops that we're fixing and we're using the quick set mud. We always want to sand with the, the Festool vacuum to make sure that we don't spread dust throughout someone's house. It's really easy when you're getting into sanding a, a decent amount of mud to instantly spread dust through uh, the customer's heating system and it just goes everywhere and then the next thing we have to do is pay for a cleaning company to come out and clean someone's entire house so we'll get into uh, mixing up some of the joint compound or some of the uh, quick set mud and doing a couple of repairs here so uh, mitch had a question about the difference between these two this is lightweight. It's going to dry a lot faster than this stuff. We're usually not going to be using this unless we're doing some kind of a skim coat application. Like let's say that we're scraping popcorn texture off and we're going smooth. Then we're going to be using this. Let's say that we're repairing a, a bunch of tape joints. Um, and on our final coat, we'll be using this. Otherwise, for any kind of small ding in drywall, we're going to be using this because it's it's easier to use, it, it spreads out pretty quick, and it, uh, it just dries faster. So that's the, the main difference between those two. Mitch had another question about what does the 2045 mean? Actually, it's, it's not necessarily the dry time, it's the working time. So if you mix this up, you have probably about 20 minutes, depending on if you're mixing with hot water or if you're, if you're mixing it real dry. You usually have about 20 minutes to actually work with it before it becomes too difficult to spread out. And the same thing, 45, 90 minute. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that's gonna be how long it takes to dry. Kinda depends on how thick you put it on. Um, you know, if you get a fan going on it, it's gonna kinda speed that process up a little bit. But, uh, so a 20 minute patch, you know, I, I would probably expect it on like a California patch, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit here. That probably more take, take more like an, an hour to really dry before I can do another coat. Okay, so we get out to, we're getting set up for the job. We look at the video, the work order information, and it looks like we, we're painting a couple of bedrooms. We have a couple of repairs to do, not a whole lot. Maybe there's a couple of uh, nail pops to fix, a couple of corners that we get to fix. So I'm going to take some 20 minute joint compound with me. I don't need a whole lot. This is all I put in the bucket here. So this is one of the first things I'm going to do on this job. I'm going to put a little bit of compound in my pan here. I probably don't, probably don't need much more than that. And I have my second bucket with a sponge and water. And I'll put a little bit of water in here. It's better to kind of go gradually with the water than start with a ton of water. So you can always add a little bit more. And I'll mix that in there. My knife, just like that. I'm going to try to get all the clumps out of it. Okay. So that, that looks pretty good. I got a little bit of lucky with the water. Um, probably want to start with a little bit less than this. So then I just take my knife, put it on my six inch blade and go ahead and do my repairs as I need to. Um, and then as soon as you get done with this material, you want to clean this stuff out right away and throw it away and then use your, your bucket here uh, with the sponge and clean it out. Because when this stuff dries in here and gets hard, it gets really, really hard to clean it out. So I'll go ahead and scoop this out here. I'll just take a sponge, sponge this out. And I can empty this water 
and clean this water out at the shop when I get back here after the job. Or if the customer does have a utility sink that you can use, you can also clean it out there. So that would be one way to mix some mud where you don't need a whole lot of it. Now I'll show you how to mix mud if you need a little bit more. Okay, so a different scenario. I have quite a bit more patching to do. I have maybe a couple of joints to fix. I have a California patch where there's a hole in the drywall I gotta fix. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more of this mud. So get our compound put in there. Take our sponge. And then I still kind of want to gradually mix this in here because the drill is going to kind of, once you start that drill up, it's going to want to spread this stuff all over the place. So I want to get it started using my inch and a half blade. And then we'll actually do the mixing with the drill. And once I can kind of get rid of most of this powder. A little bit more water. And we'll just take this drill in here like this. Probably be putting this on the ground here. spin to get that stuff off and then I'll go ahead and stick this in my water bucket clean off that blade so now this mud's ready to use again I got about 20 minutes of use out of this before it goes bad on me so uh, so I did um, that tape joint and the 20 minute mud I was using Partly, partly because I'm doing this video, dried up on me, it's been 20 minutes, it's not really usable anymore for the next patch that I'm gonna show you. So you would think, oh, okay, this is clean enough, I'm gonna add some more powder in some water and get some more joint compound mixed up. You can't do that, you gotta get this cleaned out really good every time, because this stuff will dry, harden, and it's gonna drop down into your mud that you've just mixed, and it's gonna make it bad, you know? You get little hard pieces of rock dust in there, it's gonna make mudding a lot more difficult and it's going to get super frustrating. So just make sure that every time you mix up more mud, this is really well cleaned out. So, you know, just clean it out with the, uh, the bucket that you have and the sponge. Okay, so I'll get some more mud mixed up so I can do the other kind of patch here in a second. Let me stop it. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is mix up some plus three joint compound. We're really going to be using this if we're taping a ton of joints, which we rather do because we're not a drywall company. Or sometimes we'd use it if we're going to be scraping texture off a of ceiling and we're going to skim coat it or maybe we're going to apply a knockdown ceiling. So we have done that a bunch. So uh, that's why I'm going to show you how to mix this up. Um, it's going to be the same kind of process as this. Whenever you use this, you're going to want to thin it down just a little bit. Uh, you don't necessarily want to use it right out of the bucket unless for some reason you're using it to fill tiny little nicks and stuff. If you're using it to tape joints or scheme coating or anything like that, you're going to want it about the consistency of pancake batter. So I'm going to get these tabs folded down here. And then I'll take my plastic and kind of wrap it around the edges. And then carefully... I'm going to put this right on the edge and uh, hopefully I get it to land inside the bucket. Not perfect, but pretty good. 
So now I'll take the plastic, get it put back inside of here. Kind of clean my box up. You don't want these things floating around everywhere. Especially because when you're doing a ceiling, you're gonna have to use a lot of these boxes. And I fold these tabs in so it's out of the way. Take my mud. You're obviously either in a setting where the flooring is, um, the flooring's getting replaced, or we've got plastic on the floors to cover it. So now for this, we're gonna have to hook up a bigger paddle to a drywall mixing drill. So you're not gonna wanna mix that much mud up with like your Makita drill that's inside of your Foreman bag. You have to use this, which this drill is always gonna be inside the drywall repair kit. So now I can put my blade inside of here. Now I'm gonna add some water. So you can use this brush not only to clean everything, because you're gonna have to constantly clean stuff, but also to add a little bit of water. So we'll start with that. I'm gonna kind of just squish this around a little bit here. So I kind of get the water absorbing a little bit into that mud before I start spinning it. Now when I spin this, I'm gonna kind of grab it with my two feet right here and I'm gonna start. And if it's starting at the bottom, working my way up, See, if I'm going to be skim coating a ceiling, I'm going to be probably rolling it on and then charling it back. This is way too thick for that. So I'm going to add quite a bit more water. Let's pour it out of there. If we were doing a whole ceiling, you'd probably kind of get the hang of exactly how much water to add per box. Because let's say that we're doing a whole floor and we're going to try to skim coat the ceilings or something. We're going to go through quite a bit of these boxes. That's getting pretty close. It's just kind of flowing off the end right there. You ever get in a situation where we're skim coating ceilings? This is kind of what you want to mix up. So this is the video that you're currently watching about our spackle compound and quick set, you know, mixing them up and everything. Uh, here's a diagram, kind of a cheat sheet that you'll have available to you. It's also going to be available inside of your SOPs. Uh, so you can always reference this if you need to in the future. But uh, the first is the spackling compound, um, the advantages to it, easy to sand, no mixing required, minimal dust. It's ready to use and accepts paint very well. Uh, the disadvantage is that it's just limited uses. You really are only going to use it for repairing small dings, and it needs air to dry. Um, the common uses, small dings and, and repairs. Now, for us as a painting company, that's usually what we're repairing is just small dings before we're um, applying top coats of paint. So uh, I would say probably 90% of the time, that's what you're going to end up using is this backlane. Then we have joint compound. It's uh, easy to sand as well uh, and accepts paint very well. Um, it does need to be mixed with water in order for you to use it. Coming straight out of the container, it's a little bit too thick. You wanna mix it so it's more of like a pancake batter consistency. Um, it does require overnight to dry in most cases and it does need air to dry. So you can't really apply thick coats of it. It's not really good for quick patches like a California patch or filling. Uh, pre-filling like uh, holes through drywall from caused from drywall anchors, stuff like that. Common uses would be skim coating walls and ceilings. Uh, we use it for applying knockdown textures uh, and installing more than say 20 feet of joint tape in a room. It's kind of rare for us. Usually we're just repairing a couple of seams here and there. And in that case, we're going to be using easy sand or quick set mud. So our last one is the quick set. Uh, the advantages are it dries fast. It doesn't require air to dry. Uh, air does help it, but you can apply a thick coat and it dries from within um, and it dries very hard. So it does very well on, on patch type work where you need a, a strong sturdy patch. 
Uh, the disadvantages are that it's hard to sand because it does dry harder um, and lots of dust is created when you do sand it and it doesn't accept paint well. So typically if you are going to use quick set, you also have to use joint compound over the top of that in order to get it ready for sanding and for, for painting. Common uses would be the first and second coat on a California patch or something where you have like that medium type hole that you have to repair or a first and second coat on uh, tape, uh, joint tape. So um, that's just going to be to make it so that you can get that repaired on faster. And then you're going to top it off with a joint compound as well. So it's easy to sand and easy to paint. Uh, and also for pre-filling holes caused from drywall anchors. So if we go through a house and they have a bunch of holes in the drywall caused from maybe drapes or blinds or some kind of anchor set for pictures that they pulled out and there's a, a small hole, you know, maybe the size of a, a, a penny or, or a little bit smaller than that. You can pre-fill those with a quick set and then top it off with a spackle after that. So that's just a, a quick overview of the three. Um, uh, hopefully this is helpful. We'll get into now doing some actual repairs uh, in following videos.